Hello, BookTube. It's Saturday, and it's time for another book to film. And this week, uh, we were doing Graham Greene's... Get fingers out of the way. Graham Greene's A Gun for Sale, uh, which uh, was published in the U.S., I believe, as This Gun for Hire, hence the name of the film, the 1942 uh, film, with Veronica Lake, uh, Robert Preston, and... Uh, sort of introducing Alan Ladd as uh, a major actor for Paramount. Um, and the book was written in 1936. So let's begin with the book. Uh, it has to do with uh, a hired assassin named Raven, Raven uh, James Raven. And we see him uh, at the opening of the book... Uh, that he is, uh, he's on assignment and he kills a, a Czechoslovakian uh, diplomat. And uh, he does this and he leaves no witnesses. He, it's clear that he does not like witnesses. And he is, uh, was hired by somebody named Chumley, spelt uh, Chamodli. Uh, but uh, as the guy says, his, it's Chumley. However, that's not Chumley's real name. But even so, he gets a thousand pounds in five pound notes, which he's not too happy about. But he takes it. And and uh, again, it's it, well, it's it, the setting is uh, 1936 in England here, so it's London um, where this is this is all happening and um so he takes his money and he, he's going back to his digs his his rooms uh that he has rented um and he sees uh there's a dress shop so he buys a a dress uh that's supposed to, i think it's supposed to be five guineas or something like that but he says no i'll give you five pounds for um just for those, uh, just on the side, a guinea uh, was uh, one shilling more than a pound. A pound was 20 uh, shillings, and a guinea was 21 shillings. And um, and it was it's based on a, a gold coin uh, from um, early 1800s. Uh, and it was mostly done just in tra transactions uh, and sort of to be upper class, to be... Uh, to pay in guineas not mere pounds but anyway uh he gets this dress and he says um um i forget the girl's name it's it's a young girl that's uh, sort of cleans for him um in 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 the house uh, or that he stays uh, another another tenant there um as well i think and he tells her she can go get it um and, and this, and he sort of, you know, um, he doesn't treat her very well. And, uh, he's, and it, it's straight out at the beginning that he's, he's considered repulsive to women and others, uh, because he has this, uh, as described a horrific, um, hair lip that has a scar that was not, uh, dealt with correctly when he was a child. And so he sort of, he scares people and this is this is brought home all the way through the book of how uh he is repulsive he believes he's repulsive so um and it's pretty clear that he has not had a girlfriend or anything like that uh in 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 that way um so um he he's he's a loner uh definitely um uh, and he has a cat <laughs> he likes cats <coughs> <coughs> Anyway, uh, it turns out that the um, the money that was given to him was marked, uh, or at least the serial numbers of the five pound notes um, were all written down and given to all shop owners uh, all around. And uh, uh, so he was set up uh, with the payment uh, from Chumley. And he sort of uh, is, he hears, he hears of this, he's going out and he hides in a little phone booth 
Uh, and it's, it's a good scene because the police are there wanting to know, you know, where he is. And, uh, the sort of the one guy says, oh, well, you know, call, call my wife. She, she, she doesn't want to miss this, uh, to the, to the girl that he buys the dress for. And, uh, she goes in there and he sort of holds a gun to her and says, pretend to call and so forth. And he sort of finds out that he's been double crossed and the, the, um, uh, the the money has is marked basically, uh, it's it's stolen money, so he's got the police on him, so they know who he is now, and they know that he's disfigured, uh, with the hair lip. So uh, he's just burning with rage. He wants to get back at Chumley, so um, and um, he uh, somehow he found. I forget now how he finds out this, but it's like he finds like he he's he uh, Chumley is is going north on a train, so he's he's going to do the same. Uh, and at this point, uh, with the train, we get introduced to uh, Ann um, uh, Crowder, um, who is a actress, or she's in a show, or she's going to be in a show up north uh, in a place called uh, Notwich. Uh, no such place exists. Um, I think, uh, as far as I can tell, it's, it's, uh, Graham Greene just used it as, you know, thinking of, uh, Nottingham. Um, and, um, so yeah, we get introduced to her, uh, also with, uh, Chumley, who is, uh, you know, uh, she's waiting for her her boyfriend to show up who's the policeman that's after Raven for the theft of the notes, uh, the thousand pounds or possibly more. Um, anyway, so he gets on, uh, um, the, the, uh, the train, but he has no money. So he gives, he uses one of the five pound notes, but he figures that he can do that on the train and nobody will notice, um, this until later. So he's got, he's got a bit of leeway. Um, they'll know that he's went North. So he, uh, he grabs her, the girl, Anne and Crowder, um, and sort of for him to get off the, uh, train and sort of, um, you know, help him. Uh, a little bit so but uh, obviously she recognizes him and everything and because the description's all out you know uh, for this guy uh with with uh the disfigurement uh, on his lip and uh so he takes her he, he's trying to find a place so he takes her across town to this new housing development and he's gonna kill her um he just does yeah as i said he's it's set up that he doesn't want any uh any witnesses but uh the problem is he's just about to do that in one of the uh, uh, upstairs rooms the bedrooms and uh sort of the house agent is comes in the front door downstairs as showing a couple uh, around for the place so she doesn't realize that he's going to kill her uh, that he was going to kill her i don't think um she sort of She's not repulsed. Uh, the one thing is she's not repulsed by his lip and she doesn't really think. So she's in some ways feels sorry for him and wants to help him a little bit. So she says, well, give me 10 pounds to, to five pounds. I think it was 10 pounds. That is basically if you put 10 pounds down uh, for the house, it's yours. So she comes out and speaks to, you know, uh, the agent and says, you know, I want this house, you know, the, the others get away and stuff. So she leaves with the, uh, with the agent so then he's sort of free to do this she goes to she she she's uh in a play uh in a uh it's, it's christmas time basically it's december uh and it's a panto um aladdin i think it is and she's got a non-speaking part but it's a working part and so she she also meets again the guy uh who uh pushed her out of the way so her boyfriend could she couldn't see her boyfriend coming which happens to be uh chumley uh which his actual real name is davis uh and he's from the uh, not which there and she she sort of um eventually realizes this is who he is and she's she's thinking well she's going to help 
raven and so she goes out this this guy is a predator uh you know he's a producer he has part payment in this uh in this play so he he preys on the actresses so he wants to take her out so she does uh to get information so they go to a hotel for um for a meal for lunch uh and then um uh, he, he, she says, well, you know, he, or he's going to take her back to his, his house, but he's already twigged that he, that she, uh, knows, uh, what's happening and, uh, who Raven is. And she's working with Raven, basically he thinks. So he takes her to another place, um, basically a, a brothel, a uh, house, uh, that's run by a house of ill repute run by an older lady and another guy. And, um, she sort of left with we don't know whether well it looks like you know it's it's a drawn out scene that he um it could have been a rape scene or whatever but we don't know we think that he might have killed her she disappears obviously um the the policeman is on the trail of raven her boyfriend uh jimmy mather um and uh he, he's on the trail of raven so he winds up there and then he finds out that you know there's a girl that's been helping him and they sort of identify that it's that it's his girl and he's like you know he but he's very professional and he's saying you know well you know this is my job you know i'm gonna do it you know things like this but he's he is concerned about her uh even so um but uh uh but yeah and then uh and then uh you know, uh, Raven is on the trail of Chumley slash Davis and does go to, uh, you know, he finds out that she's, uh, the girl is, is, is missing and he goes to this place, forces himself in, finds her stuffed up, uh, 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 basically the, the, uh, chimney in a fireplace. She's still alive. So, um, he sort of revives her and they, they, they leave and, uh, you find out that he, that uh, Chumley slash Davis works for this uh, big plant, um, uh, a chemical plant. And uh, so it was, it, 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 the, the plot isn't, isn't, isn't the best, but anyway, he's, so he goes to this plant because he knows that the boss there, this uh, Sir Marcus uh, is the, uh, is, is the, um, uh, the bad guy, well, the bad guy that's that's paid for all this, and what it turns out is that uh, he. No, I don't, no, sorry, no, it's not. I'm got, got got a bit confused with the film there. It's not a chemical fight. It, it's a uh, munitions um, manufacturer. So he wants this is 1936, and the Sir Marcus wants war so he can cash in. So he had uh, a Raven kill this Czech. Uh, 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 diplomat and made it look like you know it was somebody else doing it uh, another foreign power so therefore European power so therefore war is going to start and it's, it's gearing up for this and and Anne Crowder sort of realizes this and she wants to help him she's thinking that if he actually exposes this somehow and you know uh, that maybe that will stop the war uh, from happening so, um, you know, eventually, you know, he's he's on the run with uh, Raven still on the run with her. He's going to go to this uh, factory. She, he finds out that's where he probably is. Uh, Davis slash Chumley. Uh, and she but they they get sort of chased by uh, the police who, who know that, you know, that they've been uh, following him a little bit. Uh, and then they sort of wait overnight and she runs off with his hat and coat uh, to let him get away. Um, and, uh, and then he, he goes to the, to, to the factory and during all this time, how he gets it in, in is there, there's, there's a test in the town, uh, <coughs> of gas masks for possible gas attack. So everybody had to wear gas masks and, and, and do certain things, uh, while they're, you know, while they're out in public and everything like this. So this is how, uh, Raven gets into the plant uh and uh wears this gas mask and exposes he kills uh uh davis and sir marcus uh with you know he, he gets a little help along the way uh but the police sort of break into and he gets killed 
Uh, meanwhile, all this time is that, you know, after uh, Anne has sort of run away uh, or ran and, and getting the police off the trail with, with, with Raven's hat and coat, uh, she's in custody. She tells her story, but her, you know, J uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Mather, the, the cop, the, the policeman doesn't believe her, doesn't believe her really. Uh, this this is happening and he, he, he you know he doesn't know what's what's going on um, so but eventually you know they do you know contact people who contact people and they find out that it is correct uh, that you know and actually her actions by exposing this uh, and going along with everything um, you know has helped avert a war or at least postponed it Um and the, the other thing is, that, like I say, he, it, it's all the way through. It's talking about his grotesqueness, and then there's, uh, she feels sorry for him, but, but her, her, her feelings waver back and forth because, uh, you know, he, he starts talking about some dreams and stuff, and it's pretty clear he's quite psychotic. <laughs> you know, this guy is, is damaged big time. Everybody's damaged in there in this, one, in this, in this book one way or another. But he's, he's severely damaged because of memories of his mother or, or you know, a family member, you know, slicing her own throat with a bed, bread knife, you know, uh, and, and things like that. And, you know, um, so then she realizes, you know, he has to be put down like, like a, like a rabid animal, you know, but she still sort of is ambivalent about this. She can understand what and why he is what he is, you know, um, and the other thing is uh, throughout the book is the the, the, the violence in it is pretty brutal. It's pretty brutal. The, the the shootings at the beginning are not just you know bang bang that's it. Uh, the uh, you know uh, the 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 Czech uh, uh, diplomat you know he just to, you know he, he shoots him in the chest, but to make sure that he's dead uh, while he's on the floor, he shoots him in the back of the head, and it's talking about like the whole skull sort of crumbles inward and then there's his old secretary that's that's there as well uh and you know he shoots her but she runs out of the room and locks the uh lock or holding the door and you know he thought she, she might be dead so he shoots through the door at least once or twice and then she sort of falls and he has to push the door open and, and he makes sure that she's dead by putting a bullet in each eye you know, it's pretty, it, it's, it's pretty gruesome in that way. But I suppose, like, you know, uh, they're dead, they're dead. But, you know, it's it's just the, the way he is. It, it showed the character. Uh, and I, I, I kind of like the book. It, like, it, it is sort of short on, like I say, a plot and stuff like that. But it's got some snappy dialogue. And uh, it's like the introduction here is done by uh, Robert McFarlane in 2005. This edition is the vintage uh, 2020, uh, 2020, uh, edition. And, uh, he starts it out really good. Uh, Robert McFarlane says, a, a gun for sale starts with the ba with a bang. Murder didn't mean much to Raven. It was just a new job. It is an opening which places us unmistakably in the world of the detective thriller, a world of the gung ho gumshoe, the sassy mole, and the uh, smiler with the knife, where dialogue is as hard-boiled as a 20-minute egg, and the action moves quicker than whiskey over ice. I kind of like that. I got their euphemisms in there, but, you know, but it's, it's, it, it, it does work for, for, for the book. Uh, so, yeah, so then we got, you know, immediately, uh, it was sort of like, I think uh, it was published, Paramount bought the... Uh, bought the uh, uh the rights for it but it, in 1936 but it took a while to make it until 1932 and um uh uh and it was the, the script was written by wr uh burnett and albert motts uh wr burnett uh also wrote novels but he wrote little caesar and then he did the um um uh, the 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 script for the 1930 film uh the the book was written in 1929 and it's uh it was it was a gangster film uh with edgar uh is it edgar i always get it was edward edgar g robinson i think 
Sorry, but, but if I, if it's Edward, then I yeah I get those two mixed words names mixed up sometimes, uh, and also a bunch of other stuff. But he also did the uh, the the novel for uh, he wrote the novel Asheville Jungle in 1949, which he did the script in 1950 as uh, uncredited or he worked on it, and they also did the script in 1963 uh, for The Great Escape. Uh, just as, as examples, Albert Mott's um, Cloak and Dagger. Um, he did the script, uh, 1946, uh, Fritz Lang film, and other other ones as well. Uh, the director was Frank Tuttle. Um, uh, quite quite prolific, but is a problematic in the history of Hollywood because he was a communist and he ran up against UAC, uh, HUAC, uh, which is the House on on American Activities, and he he gave names. To sort of save himself a little bit, even though he was sort of blacklisted a little bit, uh, but he gave names. But he was a director back into the twenties. Um, he directed uh, "Love Him and Leave Him," uh, which had uh, nineteen twenty six with Louise Brooks, and he also another Louise Brooks nineteen uh, twenty nine uh, was the Canary Murder Case, uh, 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 Philo Vance uh, with uh, uh, William William Ho um, William Powell as Philo Vance, uh, but he. He was brought in to do uh, some additional um, sound scenes uh, because they decided to turn it into a sound film, uh, but they didn't use Louise Book's voice. There is a bit of con controversy there. Uh, he also uh, directed Glass Key, uh, which does, you know, I'm going to be doing that at some point too, a Dashiell Hammett uh, novel with Alan Ladd as well. And I think um, Veronica Lake, I believe. Yeah, I believe it's. No, no, I don't think it's Veronica Lake, but it's Alan Ladd for sure. Uh, but yeah, and it's Alan Ladd's basically big first film, um, and many, many changes, many, many changes, uh, and no longer is set in England, it's set, uh, in basically the, uh, wartime, um, uh, U.S. as the war, because they did it sort of very contemporaneously, uh, for, for the war. Uh, and uh, it's a chemical factory, uh, and they change names. The Chumley uh, uh, slash Davis character, played by uh, uh, Laird Krieger, which was, is done really well. Uh, and um, uh, he, uh, the name was changed to Will Gates, and he never used a pseudonym, so he knew exactly who he was. Uh, and it was set uh, for you know the, all the action of the murder is a chemist that he needs to get a letter. Uh, that has a formula on it from a, a chemist, and uh, then he you know kills the chemist and the uh, and, and the secretary, but not as brutally as in in the uh, in the book. Um, and uh, um, so yeah, so he he, he uh, it's it's set up that way, uh, and the. The, the guy who's doing it is is the head of the uh an old guy he's 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 um um uh basically wheelchair ridden and he's quite frail uh he he runs this uh, chemical factory and he's going to sell this poison gas to the japanese uh, who are then going to drop it on uh the american populace uh, so that's that's where the sort of you know the propaganda sort of aspect of the film comes in uh, and uh, the character uh, of the woman Ann Crowder uh, is now called um, Ellen Graham and she's a magician sort of um, conjurer um, you know dance act singing act not dance act so much but singing and she um, she is sort of co-opted from by the by a senator um, to sort of you know find out about this fifth column the the the, the this stuff and 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 everything but and then um she gets hired by by uh um the will will gates she hasn't made those connections yet uh, at that point but she gets on a uh, train to go to la because the job is in la and the uh nightclub is in la and um at that point uh because um uh raven is you know he finds out that the, the bills were uh, stolen as well and the numbers are all written down but they're ten dollar bills uh, to make up a, a thousand and it's the same situation where he buys a dress for uh, the girl uh, and you know the police come looking for him uh, and then you know he 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 goes to LA 
uh, you know, after um, after uh, Gates, who who set this all up, and he wants his boss as well. Uh, you know, and then that's where you know he he is sitting uh, in the seat beside um, Ellen at the, in this case, and um, you know uh, Gates sort of sees him on the train and, and wires ahead to say that you know the uh, Ravens here, you know, like that you can you can identify him by a broken wrist. And that's the one thing, very big change. He no longer has a hair lip; he's got a bone that's sticking out from a broken wrist. Uh, he's, it's very identifiable. So that's how they're going to do it. So when the, when the train stops in L.A., um, the police are checking everybody that's doing it. But he co-ops her uh, into sort of pretending that they're carrying a baby. So he gets off and uh, he takes her to sort of an abandoned, rather than uh, a house, an abandoned um, building somewhere. And he's going to shoot her. But uh, there's other workmen there going to tear it down. So she escapes. Uh and, uh, you know, um, but, you know, he can't do anything about it. So he's still on the trail for Gates. He finds in the telephone book, yeah, at one time your name was in the telephone book and the addresses were there. So, yeah, so he gets all the, the W. Gates, the Will Gates uh, addresses. So he goes to the one place, it's the wrong place. Uh, and then uh, he, he finds, uh, he, and then he goes to another one that's in the Hollywood Hills. And that is the right one. But in the meantime, um uh, Ellen has identified yeah, well, she, two things. She's supposed to get in, info for the senator on Gates. Um, so she goes out with him uh, for a meal and well, he takes her back to his, his house and uh, he realizes that because he saw them together on the train thinking that they're working together. Uh, but, you know, she's, she's twigged that he's the guy that Raven is after because he's big, uh, overweight guy, and he eats uh, mints, uh, and that's how she's she's twigged it. And then he twigs that she's uh, with him and accuses her. And um, his character is split up in the film to two people basically, because he's he's very squeamish in in the film. So he's got a so chauffeur that does the dirty work. That is sort of you know somehow they make uh, Ellen unconscious, tie her up. He's going to dump her in the reservoir, uh, you know, and then eventually make it look like suicide. But at the, in the meantime, uh, the police is actually uh, her boyfriend, um, which is now uh, he, he's Michael uh, Crane uh, rather than Jimmy Mather in the book. Um, he he goes there and. The uh, the chauffeur saying, "Oh, she's you know she was here. She left, so he goes off." But uh, uh, Raven is wants Gates, and then he realizes that Gates is gone. But he he figures she's still there, and he finds her uh, tied up. So he he you know immobilizes uh, the chauffeur by throwing him down some stairs in in in, uh, in, in the um, in, in the basement, which I can't really understand why he didn't just shoot him because that's the way the character was. Uh, but anyway, um, and then he, um, um, oh, this is getting kind of long. Uh, anyway, uh, he, you know, he goes, um, with her, you know, and the, the same things happen. She, she sort of d diverts the police and he goes to the chemical factory, but sh she tells him that, that the, the formula and everything, you know, she knows other stuff that she never knew in the book and that has nothing to do uh, with the character in the book, but she knows that he uh, is, uh, uh, you know, been duped, uh, but also too, that it's that, that the formula is going to be used to, to drop, uh, uh, chemical weapons, uh, uh, gas on Americans. So he's going to help her and get a confession. So he goes to the place and he gets in and they use the gas mask thing um, in the film as well by creating the situation where the uh, Brewster, who is the uh, the owner, which was Sir Marcus in the in the book, uh, Brewster is the old guy in in the in the film and he has a drill for his employees to wear gas masks and want through this. So that's how he gets in. So they, they, they warped it in that way to get, get through there. Uh, and, uh, he gets in there, he gets the signed confession. Uh, uh, Brewster tries to shoot him with a pen gun, 
and uh, has a heart attack and then he shoots uh, uh, Gates uh, but then the police come in and kill him uh, or while well, he's wounded, fatally wounded, and then she's there as well. Ellen's there, and, you know, she says, you did a good job. So far. Fade out. Film ends. So it's very different. Again, they changed everything. Uh, I'm not sure... I, I don't think I have a favorite, whether the book or not. I like the book in certain ways. It, it has a lot of failings, because it's, it's not really uh, fleshed out that much. It's a very short book. Uh, and the film is okay. It's it's an early example of uh, film noir. Um, John Getz did the or Seats, sorry, Sean, John Seats uh, did the cinematography. It's not the really lurid uh, film noir lighting and everything like that. But there's some interesting aspects about it, uh, and um, um, there's just you know, and then there's two. I don't have time to really go through the there's. There's two uh, radio adaptations. Uh, the first one is in 1942, shortly after the film. Uh, and it, it's with Alan Ladd. It's for the Lux Radio Theater, uh, produced by Cecil B. DeMille. And Joan Blondell fills in for um, um, uh, Veronica Lake. And uh, it, she's... She's a bit flat in it. Uh, it didn't really quite work for me. But the interesting thing was, well, it's an hour long. And then it was like, it was done live, obviously. And then, you know, it was transcribed um, as well. Uh, but uh, the next day after this was being done, uh, it says in the thing that Alan Ladd had joined the army. So he's, you know, he's going to be a private tomorrow, uh, like the next day. Uh, so it's kind of interesting. But they, he reprised it again in 1945 or 44, 44, 40. Um, sorry, uh, just look at my notes here. Um, for the Screen Guild Theater, yeah, 1945, and it has um, uh, Veronica Lake coming back for it. It's only half an hour, but it actually works better for me. Um, is is that because I don't know she 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 did a better job uh, than Joan Blodell. Uh, and then, but originally there was another one that's not on the thing, uh, on, on, on the blue, on the Blu-ray here, uh, is, um, uh, one in 1942 with Philip Morris and Marlene Dietrich. Um, and that was done in 1942. Uh, I'm sure I've listened to that before. I, I'm pretty sure I have, uh, but it's not on there for some reason. Um, and, uh, yeah, um. There's just a lot of changes uh, in the film, and then the, the the there's a booklet in here that's okay with a couple essays. Uh, the the commentary is quite good by um, Adrian Martin, and it's one of the first commentaries that I can that I can remember where he does spend a lot of time talking about the differences uh, from the book to the film, which I thought was kind of interesting, um, and. Uh, uh, yeah, Veronica Lake uh, was, you know, like this, you know, this one of her breakout films as well. But she she did just prior to this year before 1941, Sullivan's Travels uh, with uh, Preston Sturgis, which is a fabulous film uh, with Robert Montgomery. Robert Montgomery. Uh, but yeah, and uh, she she died at the age of 50 uh, uh, with, you know, she became an alcoholic and there was she had kidney problems and and hepatitis. Uh, in 1973 she was born in 1922 so she was quite young she was only 20 20 some uh early uh this 1942 so she was only 20 20 years old uh during the film filming of this uh uh let me see what else uh uh yeah, Frank Tuttle, the director uh, that I mentioned, he, he gave names. But the interesting thing is, it's probably you could do that with a lot of a lot of films. But the uh, commentator talks about there was many others connected with this film that uh, were were up in front of Huac as well, and and some of them that refused to do anything and then went to jail. Um, so um, so that was uh, that that was kind of interesting. Um, Let's see. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Again, it's it's one of yeah. I I I I'm not sure whether I I don't think I like the book any more than the film. They're not. 
they're not at the top of my list, but it's a good film noir. It's an early film noir, so it, it fits in with that. And, and, and yeah, Alan Ladd does quite well with this. He fits the character in the sense because the character in the book is small. Uh, and, um, and and Veronica Lake does, does quite well. I, I, I never thought either one of them were superb actors. I think there was a lot of better actors than that. Uh, but and the, one of the things I, I'll get... Uh, uh, I'll, I'll slip in my, this is about the third or fourth time that there's been a Star Trek uh, sort of connection with this uh, film, that one of the early people that they were considering for the role of Raven was DeForest Kelly, uh, who uh, obviously was in the original series of Star Trek as Dr. McCoy, uh, but he always played bad guys, uh, you know, in films before, so it would have it would have worked in that way, uh, but I think Alan Ladd does a, a lot better as well um and that was sort of the start of of their sort of roles together and they did many many films together uh and yeah it's it, it it's 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 a good film i really enjoy it um it's something that i'll definitely watch again and whether i read the book again i'm not sure but i i think i would i would pick up the book to read sections of it because as i say the dialogue is quite terse uh, at times and it, it's very punchy and that's I did like that. So there's things in the book that I that I did like a lot, and I've I've come to appreciate uh, Graham Greene much much more. Uh, he again he hated the uh, the script of it as every I don't think he liked any scripts that were done from his films. Uh, so that's a big surprise. Anyway, I will leave it there. Um, next week will be a farewell to Arms. Uh, I'll be doing that. It's the Ernest Hemingway book and the Frank Borzaghi uh, film. Okay. Getting rid of some testosterone there, I guess. Anyway, um, have a good weekend, everybody. And I will see you tomorrow, uh, fingers crossed, uh, with another shelf tour, uh, with shelf tour three of my transport section. Take care, BookTube.